organic, unpredictable, unknown, lovely, beautiful, a sense of fulfillment. This is part of the pleasures of life and not the chores of life. Hello and welcome back. Thanks for tuning in to Daily Iowan TV, your television news, sports, and weather source from the Daily Iowan. I'm John Detcott here in the Daily Iowan newsroom with the latest on what's been going on in the Iowa City area. As many students return to Iowa City and prepare for classes, the Hawkeye Marching Band is getting ready for the new Hawkeye football season. Today was the first time this season that the entire band took the field for another week of intense marching preparation, or what the band calls Hell Week. We started Hawkeye Marching Band Camp, which the students affectionately call Hell Week, and basically the concept of our camp week is to review our fundamentals, teach our fundamentals to our new members, and then polish those fundamentals and start to teach our initial routines for pregame and halftime. Our first game is coming up two weeks from Saturday, so we've got to be ready. Kyle Rogers is just one of nearly a hundred new band members. A Naples, Florida native is the son of former Hawkeye quarterback Matt Rogers, who was fourth in Iowa history for most career passing yards. And the legacy doesn't stop there. Kyle's grandfather, Jimmy Rogers, actually played basketball for the Hawkeyes in the 60s. He was named the Iowa basketball MVP twice before going on to coach the Minnesota Timberwolves. I saw the band and I saw how influenced the football team was and how they all came together. And I love music, so I wanted to be a part of that. Drum major Joe Piaski also keeps his talents in Iowa City as he leads the band for a third year. Marching band members are busy nearly all day during Hell Week with a combination of indoor music rehearsal and outdoor marching practice. On Friday, the band is rewarded with a picnic and visits from Sally Mason, Lisa Bluter, and Kirk Ferentz. Hell Week concludes on Sunday. The national organization Volunteer in America recently ranked Iowa City as the third mid-sized city in the country in, with the highest percentage of volunteerism. Now, the state of Iowa actually came in second, moving up from 32nd in 2006. A study also found that 41% of UI students volunteered their time. UI hospitals and clinics also contributed with volunteers working to aid staff and even renovating an old inpatient library. Well, I, I think everyone's always surprised at how willing college students are to help out, especially here in Iowa. Um, I mean, so I can't vouch for other states, but I can't really vouch for other schools. But here at the University of Iowa, I mean, we have great students. They come in right away freshman year knowing they want to help out and volunteer and get other volunteer opportunities on campus include the Ronald McDonald House, where volunteers prepare meals and complete household chores for patients and their families. Probably had about 2,000 people with the groups um, wow. because a dinner can average about 10 people a night, and we try and have dinner served for our families once a week. So that's 70 volunteers right there in one week. Last year, the UI started a program called Saturdays in Service, which was aimed at getting students out into the community on the weekends. And the UI will now treat sexual misconduct the same way it treats every other case. The UI's student judicial process will be the same this year, regardless of the violation. Now, the policy change comes in response to feedback that the UI received from confidential sources. The UI's treatment of sexual misconduct cases have been under strict scrutiny since the UI mishandled a sexual assault case in Hillcrest Dormitory back in 2007. And the UI is making a special effort to make this year's incoming freshman class feel welcome. On Friday, the UI will launch its On Iowa program, which is aimed at making students more familiar with the university. The program will include a trip to Kinnick Stadium, where they will learn the Iowa fight song and then have dinner on the patio. And one of the biggest classes in school history will also be surprised by a guest speaker. And we'll also get to have dinner with Sally, President Sally Mason at her block party on Sunday. And while perhaps many of those incoming freshmen would like to forget it, Iowa actually did quite well on the ACT exam. Iowa's high schoolers had the second highest average ACT score in the country, scoring an average of 22.3. And 31% of Iowa students reached the benchmark score, qualifying them as college ready. The only state to do better on the test was Minnesota, with an average score of 22.9. And for all things Hawkeye sports, let's send it over to Daily Iowa TV Sports Director Jake Abrams at the sports desk. Jake? All right, thanks, John. New divisions, new rivals, new quarterback, new Iowa Hawkeye football season. A lot looks different for the 2011 Hawkeyes with the expansion of the Big Ten and loss of vital players from years past. We may have some skeptics concerned, but history has shown that the Hawks do well when they fly under the radar, and that's just the position Kirk Ferentz likes best. No hype, just football. You know, I've been through that before. Number one, I don't really to worry about external stuff a heck of a lot because uh, it's external. And I think the one thing going back to track, and I think somebody put some notes together for me this morning. I read that we were picked 30th or 28th, 28th to one poll, 30th to another. I have no idea what polls, but anyway, um, you know, I think if you go back and look at history, preseason polls outside of maybe a 99 really haven't had much bearing where we end up. 
One player that's already proven he could handle his position is quarterback James Vandenberg, the successor to three-year starter Ricky Stanzi. He knows he's going to have the spotlight on him, but he knows now that's all part of a day's work. It's part of the job. I knew that going in. and I saw that for the two weeks I got to play. and um, It's something that I've embraced and I've been looking forward to. Um, but I know, I know it comes with the job. But even with all the changes that are taking place in this storied football program, one thing is for certain, the team knows how to come together when it matters. We're as strong as our weakest link, so if we go out there and, you know, somebody's uh, kind of goofing around or something, you know, you know everybody's going to get on it. And we're a family, so that's a big thing. As students are returning to campus this evening, we hit the streets to see if students thought James Vandenberg was ready to lead this Hawkeye football team to success. I actually think they're doing pretty well. Um, I think we were underrated, kind of under the radar, and I think we're going to have a, a really good season. Uh, they weren't so great offensively last year, but I bet they'll do a good job this year, and then they're always pretty good defensively. I think the the Hawks will do pretty good. You know, I hear we got this secret weapon, A.J. Derby, coming up. So uh, I think we'll get a kick out of that guy. I think he's got a great arm. Um, I think he's a good leader. Every time I see him, like, on ESPN being rated, I think they that his team, uh, they say that his team is, like, respects him, and he's going to be a good leader. Some pretty big shoes to fill, and everyone loves Stanzi around the campus, so it's a pretty big spot to fill, but I think he's up to the challenge. We've, we've been underrated before and gone to the Orange Bowl a couple years ago. So Every Friday before game day, you can pick up a copy of Pregame in the Daily Iowan. Earlier, I caught up with Pregame editor Jordan Garrison to get his thoughts on the upcoming season. Jordan, you've been at training camp. You know this Hawkeye team up and down. Let's start with receivers. How's Keenan Davis looking? Is he growing? Is he ready for a breakout season? It's definitely his time, his, his opportunity. It's finally here. Uh, he's a guy a couple years ago. He came in with a lot of hype. Uh, some people said he hasn't lived up to the expectations, but this is really his time you know, to, to get that chance and, and try to live up those expectations. Great. Now let's switch it over to the defensive line. We've lost some key Hawkeye players, Adrian Claiborne, Carl Klug. Who's looking good during training camp? Who's going to fill, fill those shoes? Well, whenever you lose uh, three players to the NFL, it doesn't look nearly as good as it did last year. But I think, you know, the sure things there are the most experienced guys. You have Broderick Bins, Mike Daniels are looking really strong there. Then after that, it's kind of a, a battle royal for uh, playing time. Coaches, uh, Ferentz, Thorne Parker, they've talked about they're totally willing to just rotate as many as six, maybe even eight guys on the D-line. So you have a number of players battling for spots there. Main thing there is uh, at the uh, open practice this past Saturday, there were a lot of people banged up wearing either red jerseys or not even suited up at all. So a big thing right there is for them to get healthy so they can practice with all their bodies there. All right, thanks so much for your time, Jordan. Should be an interesting season. Back to you, John, in the newsroom. Thanks, Jake. And only with Daily Iowan TV can you get a sneak peek at Thursday's pages of the Daily Iowan. Read about how the downtown Poncheros is going back to the year 1922. Plus, find out how a UI professor plans to use a $10,000 grant recently given to his nonprofit news organization. And before we leave you, let's take a look at your local weather forecast. Tomorrow should be a nice one. We're looking at a high of 86 degrees with a low of 64 and sunny skies expected. The rest of the weekend might not be so nice, however. There's a good chance of thunderstorms on both Friday and Saturday before we get back to the sunshine heading into next week. And that's your latest edition of Daily Iowan TV. Be sure to tune in at the same time tomorrow, or you can always check us out online at dailyiowan.com. For Daily Iowan TV, I'm John Detcott. Thanks for watching. Have a great night.